Okay, in the last video, I did a car going around, and I, I didn't draw my car as nice this time, a car going around a bank curve with no friction. But now what if there is indeed friction? And I'm not gonna put in numbers in this video because I'm gonna, my second video after this is going to be playing around with calculations and changing all the numbers, okay? So let's just parameterize this whole thing. So I have the car at an, uh, going around a bank at an angle theta, and then I need things like, what's the coefficient of friction, static friction? Uh, what's G? I know that. What's the mass? Doesn't matter, I don't think. Uh, what's the radius? Okay, these are all things that I'm going to just pick values for, but right now I'm just going to use them as an expression. Okay, so the the two things that we need to remember, the definition of circular acceler acceleration of an object moving in a circle, uh, and the direction is towards the center of the circle. Those are the two important things, okay, like we had before. So just like before, I'm going to draw a forest diagram for this. So here's my car. The gravitational force is down. Uh, again, the normal force is at an angle. And now I have another force. Okay, what is that other force? So there's a friction force, but which way is it going to be? Let's say the car is going super fast. It's going at its maximum speed that it could go without slipping. In that case, the car would want to slide up. So the friction force is actually down. So it's going to be this way. That's called F friction. Okay, so there's my force diagram. Now I need to pick the X and Y axis, just like before. So the car is accelerating towards the center of the circle, which is this way. Okay, so that's going to be my X axis. And this is my Y. And like before, that is the angle theta. Okay, so what about this angle right here is also theta, right? So, and the one way to think about this, these two have to be perpendicular because that's normal to the surface and that's parallel to the surface. So as I rotate these two vectors and this goes to zero, that goes to zero. So there you can see that's the angle theta. Okay, we're getting there. Uh, so let's do F net Y. And the in the Y direction, the acceleration is zero because it doesn't move up or, up or down. So I have the, I'm gonna, skip over some of the details because we did this in the last video. The X, the Y component of the normal force is the adjacent side of this triangle. So this is going to be in cosine theta. Now I have a vertical component of friction, right? You see friction is also in the Y direction a little bit. So that's going to be minus F, F, but it's going to be the opposite side. So it's going to be sine theta. Things are going to get crazy. So just calm down. Okay, this is a hard problem. Uh, and then I have the gravitational force. Now let's go ahead and um, plug in for the friction force. I know that the maximum at the maximum friction, this is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. So I can put that in here. So now I get n cosine theta minus mu n, that's, I'm just gonna leave off the S, sine theta, minus mg equals zero. I'm going to need the normal force. So let's go ahead and solve this for the normal force. If I add mg to both sides, factor out this n, I get n times cosine theta minus mu sine theta equals mg. And then I divide both sides by this stuff, I get n equals mg over cosine theta minus mu sine theta. That's important. Um, so this is, if you ever get a result like this, it's, it's okay and probably good to stop and say, wait, is that good? So let's just check the units, right? So I have M times G is Newtons on the top and the bottom, that's cosine has no units, mu has no units, sine has no units. So there's units on the bottom. So this is in Newtons, that's good. Okay, so now let's do the uh, x direction. I'm gonna use a new piece of paper because things are gonna get messy. Okay, so I should have redrawn that picture. Let's just draw, say, f net x equals max. That's always true. But in this case, it's gonna be m 
v squared over r. Now remember, I had the x, the positive x direction was this way, so this is a positive acceleration. Now what forces are in the x direction? There's actually two that have components. I have a component of the normal force, which is going to be in sine theta, and then a component of friction, f cosine theta. So I have n sine theta plus f friction cosine theta equals m v squared over r. And again, I should go ahead and plug in my expression for the friction force. So I get n sine theta plus mu, and I'm I equal to mu times n because we're at the maximum friction force. Cosine theta equals m v squared over r. And remember, the whole point here is I want to solve for the velocity. How fast can it go? Okay, so I have an expression for n. So let me just uh, factor this out. I get n times sine theta plus mu cosine theta equals m v squared over r. And then from before, I can plug in this. So now I get mg times sine theta plus mu cosine theta, all that over cosine theta plus minus, actually minus, minus mu sine theta equals m v squared over r. Check this out, mass cancels. Okay, so let's just solve for v squared, v. Let's go ahead and solve for v. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by r and then take the square root. And I get v equals the square root of r g sine theta plus mu cosine theta over cosine theta minus mu sine theta. Check it out. Okay, now, units. So this is gonna be meters per sec, meters squared per second squared. No unit, no unit, no unit, no unit, no unit. So I do get, when I take the square root, I get meters per second, so that's good. Uh, also, as I increase the radius, I should be able to go faster, found that before, that's true. Uh, what if I increase the coefficient of friction? I should be able to go faster. It's not completely clear here, but this, as I increase mu, this term increases and this term decreases. So that, that does suggest that it should do that. And I'm gonna graph all this stuff. I'm gonna change all the parameters and graph it. Um, okay, let's do one more thing because in my next video, I'm gonna make a Python program calculating this stuff. What if, what if it was going so slow? How slow could it go and not slide down? That's the next question. Um, and what, the only thing that changes there is this direction of the friction force is now up, okay? And so in a lot of cases, it could go zero meters per second and still stay there. It depends on how steep that angle is. But I'm gonna not address that problem. I just want you to, it's something that you think about, and I'll probably do it because I'm a big sucker for doing more physics problems, but that's something that you can think about. Okay, so the next video after this one, I'm going to make a Python program and it's gonna be awesome. And we're gonna talk about all these things. So I'll see you in that video. Bye. Why are you still here? Okay. No, you hang up first. <laughs>